Mm, it's time for a stream. Wow, I'm really excited. I started early today. Here, Mo. Started early today so we can do our flight simulator thing and follow it with today's extra special, never seen, never seen before uh, tour of the music studio, which is there. That little area there. People probably wondered, is that just a backdrop? Does it do anything? Is it, is it even plugged in? Does it work? Does it make any sound? Is it useful? Is it usable? Is it uh, it's wildly expensive? You know? And, and uh, you know, no to any of those, to all of those questions. It's not usable. No, it is usable, but it's not terribly expensive. So we're going to fly around in one of my new planes that I haven't tried before. And they were probably the Pipistrel, because I don't even know what a Pipistrel is. I should have looked that up, too. Um, we're going to fly around, and then I'm going to move myself, move my ass over to the the uh, the uh, studio. We're going to see if we can do the audio, and it works so I can hear what's going on. I'm not sure. And if it works out well, there's going to be more streams that take place from the, from the music studio. Since it will take definitely more than one stream to demonstrate all of the different devices that we have back there. Okay, I'm just checking everything. It looks like we're in the right category. I got my lights on. I got my mic on. Got my controller going here. We got... Okay, that's working. Good, 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 good. All right. Let's play a little flight sim. You know, my I love my formula, and I'm not going to change it. So I really have no... You know, like always, I have no idea where we're going to take off from and where we're going to go and what's it going to be like. Um... But it's basically going to be a sightseeing tour, so that doesn't look so good. How about this place? Some South Pacific Island. We always get great frame rates. Now, the plane we're going to pick is one of the new planes that I got with the package. So, and they're not necessarily all that Earth. Like, I had the... Citation CJ4, but they gave us the Citation Longitude, which is definitely argu arguably a, a more modern version of it other than that. Um, but the one I was interested in is this one here. It's called a Pipistrel virus. I don't know why you'd want to call a plane a virus. Okay, and it's got some kind of wild livery. I'm looking it up. Pip. No, pip. Pipistrel virus. It's an exceptional aircraft holding multiple records. Two seat single engine manufactured by Slovenia and Italy. It's so an ultralight home built kit or light sport aircraft introduced in 1999. Based on the pistol sinus, the virus is produced in a number of areas, blah, 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 wingspans. Emergency recovery parachute system. I don't think they model those here. Monoplane, blah, blah, blah. T-tail and air brakes. Okay. Pretty recent design. All right, let's check it out. Let us check it out. So hopefully we can, we can we're going to start at a ramp at this tiny little island airport in this thing called a Pipistrel. Now I have never flown this plane before, so we're going to take a little while to get used to uh, to take a look at it, get used to it, kind of get the feel, kind of get the feeling. We got to start a hype train here. Sorry, hold on, give me a second. Uh, Oh, I didn't start it. Someone else did. All right, let's move on with our lives. Here is the airplane. Uh, again, since it being a nineteen uh, a late nineties design, you're gonna assume it, clum it comes with a glass cockpit, not a uh, old fashioned cockpit. That's a very interesting looking design. It does say Pipistrel on the side there, and it says Kench, of course, being my plane. There's the two of us ensconced in our uh, cabin there. Got little some windows at the top for high viewage. It's always good for safety. Looks like it opens too. 
uh, My Little Plane on the back. What is that supposed to be? Like My Little Pony? My Little Plane? Is that what this color scheme is about? I don't know. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy here. Okay, you got your dual garments. Do we need airflow? Not at the moment. Uh, a, oh my goodness, a, a, a um, autopilot. Holy camole. Battery on, avionics on, magneto on, repeller to 100%, engine choke on, um, throttle to uh, there, about there. Fuel left, right, and off. It's on left. That's good. Pitch trim. We don't need to activate currently. Okay. Avionics are coming on. Uh, let's get our Garmin booted up. We can turn that on. Things okay there. I think we're ready to start the engine. It did fire right up there, as you can see. Purring like a kitten. What are these other controls down here, though? I did not get this. You can operate a pitot heat. I don't think we'll need that. Landing lights, nah. Nav lights, yes. Cabin lighting, sure. Actually, we don't need this in day flight. Okay, battery master. Ah, it doesn't hurt us to keep that on. These are the. Um, you can turn the engine choke off once it's warmed up. I'm looking at the uh, engine indicators, which are. Oh, interesting. They're here in the top on this one. Normally, they're kind of on the side, but this is a vertical orientation. Okay, I actually think I know where everything is on this plane of interest. Where is. Let's see. Okay. What's. What is this here? That doesn't do anything. What about on this side over here? Does that do anything? You can't open the doors, but I'm not shocked. This is propeller control and throttle control. Okay. So it does have a variable propeller. All right. We can need to push back now. Uh, take off straight out. I don't care what direction. November Charlie Alpha India traffic to Pistrol Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel taking off runway 14 straight out departure. Do I have brakes? Oh, yeah, there they are. Parking brakes. Off. Okay, give it a little plane. And it should run. It does. Too much. It looks like this is one of those interesting planes that has a flaps that are at the zero in the mid position. So there's a negative flaps, there's zero flaps, which is normal, and then there's takeoff flaps and then the landing flaps. So we want takeoff flaps, which is the third position. And we won't necessarily be using landing flaps or the, up, the, the zero position for the flaps, the negative position. That's what it looks like from the inside. Go close to the ground, little plane. These are pretty fun to fly. All right, I guess we're going to be departing south. November Charlie Alpha India traffic for Pistrol Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel taking off runway 14 departure to the south. But they're just gonna fly around. Alright, let's get off the ground here. What we're gonna do is slowly push the thrall to the limit. See what that does. Pretty stable. Doesn't want to go in front of itself. Okay, 60 degrees, 60 knots. Want to take out speed there. And then, uh, what's off the ground, of course, it does not have a retractable landing gear, but we are setting the flaps to zero. So the flaps are now not, you know, 
providing the minimum amount of drag. Really, the only thing, I don't know what island this is, but according to this, it basically just has an airstrip and this uh, island resort here. Something like that fancy. Not bad, though. Really little cool cabins. Building. The wings are pretty thin. I don't know if there's anything on this main island. Let's find out. I think there might be. So yeah, this is definitely a great plane to uh, being a propeller plane, not very powerful. Good plane for low level fly. You're not going to get much altitude or go much of a distance. Although, with the addition of the autopilot there, I can imagine that you can go quite a distance. We're going to back off of the propeller a little bit here. Let's go ahead and shoot that way. So yeah, this main island part is got something of a community on it, although small. Going on, I imagine. Let's see, yeah, there's a town of some kind. Another kind of resort community or beachfront community here. Looks like these guys are on the water. We're in a very isolated location. No, we're doing the segment. The uh, we're doing the uh, flight simulator segment first, as always, because it's my formula, and I'm not messing with it. And then we're going into the back. We're going to take a short break, so it's going to be about um, 20 minutes or so before we actually get to the musical studio segment. By the way, hi, science. Thank you for coming by. We're flying in this plane I haven't flown before. It's called a Pipistrel Virus. I have the data up on here from Wikipedia. It's made in Slovenia and Italy. It's uh, basically a, a 1999 design, so th that's the modern cockpit. Um, apparently it's in quite a few configurations, it's available as a kit, it's available as just plans, build it yourself, or as a completed plane. Um, has some interesting features according to that, specifically air brakes, and I don't see where the air brakes are. So I feel a little like, no intentional spins. What does that mean? Can I unintentionally spin? Okay, there's the, um, that's the fuel gauge, by the way. But is what's back here? That's the um, by the way, that's the parachute. It has a parachute. Whoop. Okay. While I was not looking, I collided with it. We're gonna we're gonna fly. We're gonna keep flying. We're we're yeah. Keep keep lurking. Um, we're gonna keep flying. Um, I was looking for the the air brakes because it says it has air brakes, and we're of course I should have put my autopilot on. You know, that plane was already boring me. Um, and, and again, we have some other options. Wait, that's not what I wanted. Options. I, um, we're going to go to the same place or a similar place. But again, I got these 10 planes. And some of them are very, very much variations of the, on others. Um, specifically, um, let me just bring this up again. Um, let's see. Okay. The Pistol Virus, we tried that. It looks like a nice plane to fly around. Okay, the, yeah, these diamonds. The DA. Okay, so if we're here, let's fly somewhere. Let's fly somewhere. By the way, these islands are so isolated, it's not like you can fly from somewhere to somewhere else. This is always a fun place to take off from. Departure, but not in the Pipistrel virus. I want to try one of these other planes too, because I want to get through these. We're gonna be 
trying the diamond. Yes, it's a diamond. Okay, so the new ones are the 40 TDI, which is similar to the 40 I already had. And the DV20, this is the one I want to try. Hopefully it comes in, yeah, it comes in some wacky livery and the boring ones. And we'll do another quick flight. Yeah, I was just wanted to see if I could find the... Um, air brakes because it says in the information panel there that it has air brakes and they're not normally on a plane like that you don't normally need them you normally need them on a on a like a metal plane that's very aerodynamic and can't and has trouble slowing down for landings like a jet uh, but it didn't seem like i could find them but also as i say it had a had a, a place where you could pull the parachute but I don't think a Microsoft Flight Simulator models parachute, emergency parachute deploying. Of course, the parachute is actually a parachute that holds up the plane in case of loss of power. All right, so this is this wild looking plane. Yeah, and this is, each one of them comes with this kind of wild, uh, not a real, not a real livery, not a real plane. But the other one was like, Hello Kitty or something, but it was Hello Kitty toy. This one's toys. All right, cool looking cockpit. Obviously, this is an older one. Because uh, it does not have a full screen Garmin. It just has the typical Garmin Navigator. Um, which is fine. Okay, let's see. anti s engine, propeller 100%, throttle up to there. Parking brake on, engine choke on, um, fuel valve. I think on means you have fuel pitch trim. Uh, we should be able to start the engine then in that case. If it stays on, then in fact the fuel valve was open. I believe it was because you can see the engine spinning. All right, let's look at our um, controls here. Altimeter. This is uh, vol the voltage. Okay, intercom levels. Okay, amp, good. Fuel load. Oil temperature. Oil temperature, oil pressure, great. So our current RPM. Fantastic. Yes, this is all good. What are these? Okay, those are warning lights. This is your te electrical test system. Flaps up. Okay, the engine choke goes off once we've kind of started things up a bit here. Sure, let's see if we can get takeoff clearance. Okay. Rob Diamond Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel with Charlie request taxi for takeoff departing straight out. Diamond Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel Taxi 2 and hold short of runway 14 using taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on one tree for decimal five five when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway one four via taxiway Alpha Diamond November Sierra Hotel. It's a big airport with lots of jets. It's a cool looking plane. I would say it's, it's it, obviously this is the kind of plane that's kind of cramped on the inside. Diamond November Sierra Hotel. Yeah, I see those cars flying around. We're fine. Honestly, you can't run into traffic. All right, what do we have flaps? We have just regular two position landing, takeoff, and regular flight. Okay, looks good. We're just going to take a quick land, a take out the landing because we do want to get to the. Yeah, I got like flying. We do want to get to the segment that I that, that I'm kind of you know, inter interested to find out myself where we travel back to the. Uh, Musical studio, and I don't have any particular plan that once we do, once we get there, so that'll be the interesting one. Okay. Roger, we'll take this traffic ahead of us. Hotel. 
Check before takeoff. Canopy locked on both sides. Well, can the canopy unlock? No. Right? So, what's the point of that? Bahamas, 224 hold position. Caution the generic on the taxiway. Yeah, I don't know if this guy's going to move any time soon. This is got it's three airplanes stacked on each other. Next to each other, as if it was a triple wide. Well, that's wild. That's a bug for you. Check this out here. That is wild. That does not look like any plane I am familiar with. But imagine if it were. Oh, look. And one of them's kind of moving. There it goes. So it turned from three planes into, into two planes. Yeah, like we're not going to wait for two planes to. We got it. We got something. We got places to be. We're more important than these guys. There's no particular reason why we can't take out the same kind of thing. We, we don't have clearance and they'll yell at us, but I don't care. I just want to try flying around on this new plane, but I haven't flown before. There's still two planes back there occupying the same location. This is wild. Can you be ejected or ejected from the plane? No, you can just be like, oh, you crashed into something. And you can only crash into the ground buildings or, um, yeah, that's it. You can't let smash into another plane. Well, look at the amount of crazy activity going on here that, that isn't realistic. You got two planes there stacked on top of each other, another plane on the runway while another plane lands. And then me just like, what the hell? Probably another one coming in too. That guy's taking off. We're gonna go right behind him. All right, that's full power. Looks like takeoff is about 60 knots. Full power. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, but I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry just to try to try this plane. We're just gonna come around and land it. All right. Well, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna knock your socks off. But it has a decent climb rate for a, a little plane like this. And the one thing that you want to do before you kind of look around here and give up the controls is trim the plane so that it is not nose heavy. All right, that's too much, but I'm, I'm adjusting the trim of the plane, vertical trim, so that when I'm at vertical speed zero, it tends to stay at zero. That's a little tricky, but pretty close there. That way you can kind of look around the plane and you're not worrying about it hitting the ground like it did last time. You also don't want it to go climbing because then it could go... Um, ...stall on us without looking at it. And there is no... And here is fixed. So Nassau at the Bahamas is a pretty big city at least. Compared to that other island we were just at. And that it has a big airport. It serves it's quite a few islands. But the Bahamas used to be a British colony. So it still has a British influence to it. It's kind of cool. Okay, well, all the instruments are clear. Uh, unlike the other plane, it does not have the autopilot, but I never use it anymore. But it's just good to know if I ever want to make a, you know, simulate a long trip somewhere, that um, some plane, planes that have an autopilot are going to be a lot better for that. Let's see if I can get 
And of course, if there isn't an autopilot, then being able to trim the plane is really important. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble staying in altitude. 4% and a little less. Yeah, it's, a, it's an easy plane to fly. All right, let's head back to the airport now. We're going to land it. And then that's it for the uh, flight simulator segment today. But it's going to be one every day. We're going to take that, that new citation out. And we're going to just land on this little runway. We don't have to tell them. They'll be fine. I'm not going on the big one. I'm going to land on the little one. It's still huge. Alright, so to prepare for landing, not much you have to do except you should put, make sure your uh, color is at 100. Exit 337, continue taxi. Flaps at mid position. And then start to lose some altitude. Okay, and we're going to go flaps to full landing position. You see the trailing edge flaps are way ways down. Providing us a lot of extra lift and drag that we need to land. Landing speed is pretty slow, so we're going to have to hopefully slow down a lot. But I think we're fine. Landing speed is about 50 knots, 45 knots. Inside the plane. So we're traveling quite fast. Engine is idling. We burn off some speed. We cannot land at this high speed, but we got 70, we gotta be well under 60. Come in, I'm just going to kind of flow to a landing 60, 50, 60, 70, 50, yeah, we went closer to 40. That's yeah, a very soft touchdown at 45 knots. Yeah, smooth landing, but the, as, I, as I said, the key to landing is knowing what your airspeed is as you touch the ground. Because there's many planes where if you land too fast, you will bounce into the air. Well, most planes, especially not this time, not the tricycle gear, but the tail draggers. Okay, uh, parking brake on. Fuel valve off. Everything off. And that's it. So it's electricals. Oh, yeah. The magneto is off. And then, yeah, you can't open the canopy. So we're stuck in a closed canopy. It looks like it's well modeled. It's got like a spring to push the canopy. And this is the actual lever, but it doesn't have any hot spots there. Can you open this thing up? No. Sometimes you can open up the little uh, ventilation thing. Definitely an interesting looking plane, and uh, one looks looks like you know it's designed for performance and uh, kind of uh, efficiency. 
Yeah, I'd fly that again. But yeah, next time we're going to take a two-engine plane. We're going to take a, a Citation a small business jet. Because it's a new one. I haven't flown it before. It'll be new. And that one will be very interesting. In fact, we'll, we'll get that one ready for next time. And I'll take, we'll take a quick look, look at it. So the plane we're going to fly tomorrow. By the way, every I'm gonna be, as far as I know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow. So this is tomorrow. The plane we're going to fly tomorrow. And tomorrow will be Qatar, I believe. In the second half. Is okay under I believe it's citation. Maybe not. It's under. Let's see. Where is it? It's business jets. Textron Aviation. Okay, so I had the CJ four. The, the plane that I have not flown before is this, um, the, the um, Citation Longitude. It's got some pretty looking liveries here. That's for sure. Oh, we gotta try red. I mean, red's a plane. All right, but this is for tomorrow, so it's it's gonna remember. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna need five minutes or so to move to the back area <clears throat> and uh, activate the system, uh, and then we'll see what happens. Thanks, Flint. How you doing? Hey, stick around. We're gonna. I'm gonna turn it in about five minutes. We're gonna do some music from the electronic music studio. See if we can make some music. At least I'm gonna kind of show everybody what the capabilities of the various devices that are back there are, what they're for, and kind of how they can put together a home music studio themselves if they wanted to. And um, yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. We should play Sea of Thieves sometime when you want to. Okay, give me five minutes. Oh, there you are. Okay, give me a couple minutes just to switch over. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for coming by. Um, just a couple minutes to switch over, and then I'm, we're going to move to the back, and we'll see how it goes. It'll just take a couple, hopefully a minute or two.
Okay, well, I'm going to move over. I'm going to mute. I'm muting my mic over here, and then I'm going to talk from over there. Hello. Okay. So you should be able to hear me. I am watching myself. Yeah, it's a new angle. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I love this angle here. Kind of the back of the head angle. The back of the head angle is not my best angle. Hopefully you guys can hear me uh, talking into this microphone, but I'm going to just, okay, so I've got three cameras going now. What I'm doing here is I've got my secondary camera that I normally use here. That's this one here that I'm waving at right now. And let's see if there's a pause. And then um, I got my iPad here that I'm pointing at right now uh, as, as my third camera. But I'm not happy with having to, yeah, you can hear me clearly because I'm, if I talk directly into this microphone, but unlike that other microphone, which kind of captures you from a few inches away, this one you got to get right up, up close and personal on. And I'm not that th thrilled because I want to be able to kind of move around. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a different setup. I'll show you how it's going to work. Okay, so do, 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 do. so this mic is on this headset, and um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is anyone in chat can just say, "Can I hear? Can you hear me clearly now?" The good thing about this is I can move around. Uh, I can move around and I can talk to you guys, and um, uh, I don't have to be concerned about am I talking into the micro into the microphone because it's it's it's, not, it's right here, and it's a, it, this is a good quality microphone. Okay, thank you for saying you can hear me. Uh, I do appreciate that. Um, anyway, welcome to Ken's studio, uh, my music studio. I've been putting it together. It's probably been about five or six years now. Um, and this, you have an overview here from, from here. Uh, let me kind of get out of the way and kind of go from left to right and just say what everything is. The first item here on the left is a Korg Op 6 uh, altered FM synthesizer. So it's an FM synthesizer. It's a new, it's a new design, but it can actually emulate the original Yamaha DX7 synthesizer from the yeah because you have a headset. I have a lot of things. All right, I have too many things. It's not like I have. I don't use this that much, but I have a lot of stuff. This is not a, a computer headset. This is a musical headset, by the way. This is an Audio Technica. It's not. It's got an XLR interface, and it's it's not a. It's in the, and no USB or regular kind of plugs. It's very specific. To, the, to this specific kind of uh, setup here. So um, this is a wonderful synthesizer. Uh, and we're gonna get into more of the capabilities of it, but it's, um, it can do some amazing stuff. Now the heart, of my, the heart of my studio here is the mixer and recorder interface, okay? So this mixer and recorder interface are, you, uh, some people use a, a DAW, they use a, a, a digital, audio workstation that's plugged into a laptop. And that's perfectly good, but I didn't want to go with that. It, it definitely has some disadvantages, and in fact, can even be more expensive. This is not an expensive mixer, and this is not an expensive, it's about $250 digital recorder uh, that does eight tracks. Now, this whole system is really optimized for this particular um, system. So in fact, you can see all these chords here. Uh, this mixer has four stereo channels each of which basically just has stereo input and then a, an effects return and a volume or, and a, a pan. Um, and four uh, analog mic channels where you can plug up to four mics in, but I have my drum machine plugged into two of the mic inputs. They can also be used as line inputs. And then I have the mic there and the mic there. Those are the other two microphone inputs. And then all these, did all these, these four um, stereo inputs are for this thing, the, uh, this synthesizer, that synthesizer, and I have an extra one. I have an extra extra two channel, two channels that I can use if I want to plug a third, plug a fourth thing into that I'm not currently using. So there is some expansion room available, but basically I'm using the full function of this mixer. This mixer also has, and it's kind of hard to find this particular unit anymore, also has compression on the, um, single one knob compression on the microphone inputs. It's very handy for recording vocals. Um, and it has, uh, in addition to, uh, to basic EQ, it has an effects section, which I've got like a plate reverb. So you can kind of hear, this is, um, let's say, uh, this is no reverb at all. This is way too much reverb, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but you can, you know, I can keep it turned down, but then when I want to sing, I like to have more reverb. Help, having reverb helps you sing, helps people sing. They, it, singers can tell you that. Um, so this over here is a Roland TR-08, TR-08 drum machine. It's based on the original from the 70s sounds of the, um, the TR-808 drum machine. Um, by the way, one thing I wanted to do was uh, see if I could do this. Um, you can also have this light on. It doesn't really do anything. Which is actually come over here and take the iPad and uh, take it off its little thing here. Oh, I think I just turned it off. That wasn't good. Hold on, reconnecting. Reconnecting. Okay. So then, all right, yeah, now it's reconnecting. Let's see, where am I pointing? Then I could use it, kind of hold it like this. And the thing is, I can't really tell what I'm aiming at. But you can see closer up um, where, you know, what these look like from my point of view. And like what this, what this, uh, let's see, what this, yeah, okay. It's kind of getting, giving me some, some closer up there. Um, uh, what this, uh, this unit here, it's got, basically, you can't control the individual sounds, but you can control. The, these predefined rhythms and it has extra rhythms that come in. Um, uh, okay, but let's keep moving over here. So down here, obviously, this is a piano. Um, and this piano is just like my other piano that I use, the white piano. Okay, I'm just trying to use this as a handheld. So now I'm, I'm just not pointing at the right thing there. Where is it? It's over there. Okay. Um, and so this gives me my electric piano and organ sounds, but mainly my piano sounds. And then the uh, flagship, really, in terms of synthesis of my system is this DeepMind 12 thing here, which I think you can kind of see here in the inset here. I spent thousands of hours perfecting the sounds of this thing. Um, it has a thousand patches. Let's see. All right, I'm going to put this back here. Hold on. Just got to make sure not to push any buttons. Okay. I can kind of see where that's pointing at now. All right. So I'm going to move this here so that you can kind of see what I'm doing because I want to talk a little bit about this deep mind. Um, the DeepMind 12 synthesizer here. So you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Okay. All right. By the way, what I'm doing here today is, uh, for my setup, you can't really see it, but on the other side, I have a TV, and I'm watching my 
Twitch stream, including the, ch the chat. So I can see if you chat and I can answer questions. So if you're thinking he's not, uh, inter you know, he's probably not interacting with chat, I can just read over there. Mr. Moore, most recently, Mr. Short has sent several messages. Says Ken's just going to lay down some beats. So it's really easy. I can't type, but I can respond um, to chatters. And you may have questions about the synthesizer. What makes it sound like that, number one? Well, uh, you have to look at the architecture of a synthesizer. In this case, it has a digital or a analog section, a digitally controlled analog section, and a pure digital section. The analog, digitally controlled analog section includes two digitally controlled oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two, which can be synced together and also pitch, lots of pitch modulator, a digital a, um, analog noise generator, so that's controlled by this noise level slider, yeah, really. No, it's it, eventually you get you figure it out, but it takes a long time. It takes a long time. Um, the, the voltage controlled filters. The filters give the, the filter just that resonant quality, and and the and the frequency sweeps right here. So if I change the frequency of the filter, you can hear me. That's what a filter does. Okay, and the resonance changes the kind of ugh, the, the the kind of sharpness of the filter. So. So there's a lot of resonance and no resonance. And so everything can be controlled from these sliders or programmed in in, in, a, in a program. It's kind of amazing. These sliders are soft. They're not actually, they're just providing leverage input, but you can uh, control everything, almost everything. Well, not nearly everything, just a lot of important things you can control from these sliders. And then there's a visual feedback as to kind of what you're seeing there on the screen in terms of what you're changing from the original patch and things like that. So um, it, it's important. But as I said, the analog section also includes, um, yeah, really, you should play. You should play Aziz's keyboard. I mean, I, I recommend it. I mean, um, it's just it could be fun just getting playing with sounds. And, So the things that, that I've talked about so far are standard on any synthesizer. It's going to have two oscillators that you can sync together. It's going to have a noise generator. It's going to have controllable filterators, fil um, filters, and for each voice. So this is a 12 voice system. So it can play up 12 sounds. So this is one sound. This is two sound. That's four sounds. That's uh, eight sounds. And then that's 10 sounds. You can tell because it's it, I'm, it's lighting up which oscillators are currently active. And if all 12 lights are on, then all 12, all, all, all 12 oscillators are active. And each oscillator, or each of the voices, excuse me, has the two oscillators and the, the filter, and it's all controlled by what we call envelope generators. These are things that over time produce a signal that controls the output level and uh, um, the filter uh, level, and this one has three envelopes, so there's a, a kind of a utility envelope that they call modulation envelope, which can be applied to anything. But those are kind of standard. At least you have, you got to have at least two envelopes to make a synthesizer. But this has three, and they're more controllable than the standard envelopes. Now, the other thing we have over here on the left are your LFOs. Those are called low frequency oscillators. So, low frequency oscillators, and you can see it acting here if you can see this light here. Um, it's something that over time is always kind of generating a smoothly changing, uh, in many cases, smoothly changing signal. Um, and it could be a sine wave or a triangle wave. It could be changing different ways. And then you, as a synthesizer designer, as a sound designer, you're free to assign LFO or LFO, LFO2 to anything you want, like you know, uh, amplitude, the filter sweep, resonance. And it's all done mainly by this called a modulation matrix. So uh, this synthesizer, old synthesizers used to have everything patched together with sound chords and separate modules. And, the, and it, it wouldn't make any sound at all until you plug, some, plug the wires in. This one makes plenty of sounds. You don't have to plug any actual wires in. But it has a virtual wire section. So the virtual wire section in this case has eight, up to eight uh, routing settings, and each routing settings is a source. Say in this case, the it's the modulation wheel, and it is positively changing the resonance. That's this this slider in real time as I move this wheel up and down. 
So that's resonance. Less resonance. More resonance. Less resonance. So, um, and that's what that's and that I'm. This particular patch controls uses the modul modulation wheel for that. You can use you can have the modulation wheel go to multiple things. So it's going both to the the resonance, but it's also going to the frequency of LFO one. So as I move the modulator up, this light's going to go faster. So you got, start now. It's faster. Now it's slower. So the modulation wheel is effectively plugging into two different parts of the synthesizer so that I can control in real time. The sound using this modulation wheel. This is a pitch wheel, which you can reassign, but in almost I have it set for all the synthesizers just to act like a normal pitch wheel. Now this is this this is the arpeggiator. So some of these voices, by default, have an arpeggiator. Uh, so the arpeggiator feature automatically is it's it's basically a set of parameters that you can assign to any voice. It turns it from basically I control it from the keyboard one note at a time to I basically put in some notes uh, and it kind of riffs off of them in a repeated way using an algorithm that you can control and then it can say hold it so it will hold even when I'm not touching the keyboard so that's the basics of an arpeggiator except it's, in this it's Every voice can have its own arpeggiator settings or none at all. So anyway, speaking of how I um, like to make these tracks, um, this synthesizer here has a built-in, I'm gonna change, move this over here, you can, I can see this one here. Um, has a built-in, also has a built-in arpeggiator and also has, has like I think 500 pre-programming sounds and each one has the ability to, um, uh, to have an arpeggiated sequence. Now what I'm doing here, I just hit play. I didn't make this sequence, but the tricky part here is I'm using MIDI, which is a, a, a digital uh, musical instrument uh, interface, out from this into the back of the drum machine so that when I hit play, it triggers the drum machine and it's synchronized. So, so if I change the tempo using the tempo knob faster, the drum machine gets faster too. It's synced. These are synced together. Slow way down. So that opens up a lot of possibilities because you can start with, say, a pattern that's pre-designed in here and then add things from here. I don't know if I like this one, but there's a lot of good ones. I mean, this, I'm only at 28 and there's like 500. All these are active.
There's some good ones, but they're way further down. Let's see if we can find some. Um, for these. They're all kind of weird. They're different. So I want to discuss a couple things about the synthesizer. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, this, it's naturally for hip hop and stuff, especially this very digital sounding things. But I want to talk about the synthesizer. It is the effects section, okay? I haven't even discussed that. In addition to all the stuff that the synthesizer can do in terms of generating a sound, it can then send it to this virtual effects rack, the effects rack that you design that has up to four uh, entries in it. Each one is you chose them from 30 different real based um, effects modules like compressors, uh, reverbs, uh, rotor and uh, distortion things, plate reverbs, hundred and a lot of different effects, and then each one of those has between six and twelve parameters that can be mod modified using, say, the modulation wheel or set to whatever you want, and then mixed in. And then um, oh, there's, it's it's more there's more to it than that. I can't really get into the whole effect section. I'm just going to talk about one specific effect. It's called rotary speaker. So rotary speaker is this effect. It's very pure. In the actual rotary speaker effect, you'd, it's called a Leslie, and you'd attach it to an organ or it's built in the organ, and it, the speaker actually is powered by a motor. It's vertical, and it spins on, vertical, on, on an axis like a globe, but it's a speaker, and it goes zzz, and it spins up, and then the motor powers down, and it spins down, and it's powered by a switch that's down there at the, right at the bottom of the thing. So you're playing your organ, and you have a little switch you can turn on. Now, this, I don't have a switch, but I can use the mod wheel. The mod wheel either turns it on or off, so it's off, it's on. It's off. And so you can control how fast and the acceleration and the minimum speed. So the key is turning it on and turning it off so you can get that spin up and spin down effect and get it timed right. Just for that one effect, it's it's already one of the best synthesizers for doing certain things I've ever I've ever used. But that's just one of I believe thirty five different effects that you can that that are, you can build into this thing. Kind of the original Blade Runner or Vangelis Marauder. A lot of these very atmospheric sounds are really built in the effects section. Another thing this synthesizer can do that's very unusual is you can set it up um, uh, to have uh, random oscillator drift. So each sound, each sound consists of two sounds, or in this case I'm using three voices together. They're, each of the three voices are slightly detuned by I'm controlling that I'm controlling here is one parameter, but then there's an oscillator drift parameter, which is each oscillator gets a slightly different, a very small, slight different value each time. And that means each time you hit a note, 
you can have a very slightly different character, even if you're hitting it exactly the same way. In addition to the fact that it's velocity sensitive. That one's not very velocity sensitive. All the sounds, because there's thousands of them, or a thousand of them. All the sounds are interesting in some weird way. I'm having the modulator wheel control the speed of the phaser of phase effect, so that's a very different kind of thing you could do with the modulator wheel that you can't do with most synthesizer. Sing about my rise and fall, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever rose in, so. Jupiter key, Jupiter is a synthesizer from Roland. You can hear it's um, kind of detuning itself. It's also bouncing uh, voices back and forth in the stereo. Uh, I've already have I have a CD. I should have given it to you. Electronic music I did in 1999. So, so you can hear the very soft. It's called res spec because as you hit harder, you get increased resonance of the filter. Guest, uh, I could do a guest. We could do a guest thing on your stream, you know, if you're streaming at the same time, and I'll kind of play background music while you, uh, you know, do stuff or something. I'll just kind of find sounds. Lead. But the, the quality of the sound. Obviously, just standing here and digging around for hours at a time is something I like to do. So that's why I'm planning on doing it on stream, and we can do that some more. I want to see if I can find a, a sound from here, though, that we can kind of work with. Um, I 
talking about how the, the synthesis engine works on this thing is also going to take would take t maybe ten to twenty hours because it's really really complicated. It's all, nothing like this. There's no analog center to it. Actually done a bunch of things by doing this. Come up with some interesting stuff. So that's D. Oh man, how about so much fun? The T painters where he had music for his beats live. When he, I did not see that the stream contest. That was the can I lick the microphone when I play music? I, I, I probably could. This, see, this one's not active. I'm using this one. This because this only picks up if I'm standing right here, and I have it on. Check one, check one. So that's my other microphone. But like from here, you wouldn't hear it. So this this way, I can move around and talk, and but it's not a quality microphone that I can like really sing in or anything like that. I guess it sounds okay. I'm just having a good time checking these things out. That should be good. Just playing this out. There. Yeah, it does. What? This is no, it's quantum. Okay, so what is the key in? E. Hypothetically, 
let's imagine that I want to make a recording of something like that. How would I do that? And the answer is quite simple. I would program which channels, I have eight chant tracks available and I'm using two, but I'm going to program them into there that, uh, and I'm going to switch this over here. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second here. Right. And I'm going to have them go into tracks three and four on my digital recorder. You should be able to hear me now too. This is, now you're hearing me filtered through the recorder itself, but I'm, I have two channel, channels ready to record. So we are going to record just for fun to see how it works. So, okay, we're in E, we're in E, right? Okay. So we set this ready to go. we get a minute and 44 seconds what did it sound like let's find out okay oops so Yeah, I, I, So I, I put uh, my mic was live. So the, what do we get is in this is, is in that recording, but it's just at the very end. It's kind of kind of funny. Um, you know that was good. It was very exactly. It had a very fat sound to it, um, and uh, you know a lot of it. This sounds a very fat sound. And this sounds a very fat sound. They're very different, right?
you got kind of this smooth sound. It's called Blade Runner. It's kind of based on the Blade Runner. And this is metallic pluck. You know, I can sing because, you know, I can go. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. I thought all the dark clouds had me blind. And it's gonna be a bright, bright, cool sunshine day. Yes, I can make it now, the rain is gone. All of the bad feelings have disappeared, I read that mic. Here is a rainbow I've been praying for And it's gonna be a bright, bright, shiny day Look all around, there's nothing but blue sky Look straight ahead, there's nothing but blue I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way More reverb Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind uh, And it's gonna be a bright, bright, uh, sunshiny day uh, and it's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Tall and tan and young and restless, the girl from Ipanema goes walking, and when she passes each one, she passes, goes on. When she walks, it's like a samba that swings so cool and sways so gentle that when she passes each one, uh, she passes, goes on. Oh, 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 but I want her so badly. How oh, can I tell her I love her? Yes. I would give my heart gladly But each day as she walks through the sea She looks straight ahead, not at me Tall and tan and young and lovely The girl from Ipanema goes walking And when she passes she smiles But she just doesn't see ya She smiles, but she just doesn't see. Oh, she just doesn't see. She just doesn't see. Walk 
my way And a thousand violins begin to play Never know the sound of your hello That music I hear I get misty the moment you're near You can say that you're leading me on, but it's just what I want you to do. Don't you notice how hopelessly I'm lost? That's why I'm following you. On my own. Would I want to do this wonderland alone? Never knowing my right foot from my left, my hat from my glove. I'm too misty and too much in love. Hey, thanks for coming to the stream. I think it was, went out pretty well. How long have I been going for you? Hold on one second. Well, I ended up uh, not going too long today. Today, check, check. Okay. All right, control room there. Okay, I ended up not going too long today because I kind of trying things out, and in fact, things like it looks like at least one of the maybe not. I'm wondering if my cameras are frozen. No, they're working. Um, but um, the idea of having the three camera system is good. I'm not sure I really needed that upper right camera there, you know, the camera from my desk. Like, it may not really provide anything, so I could have turned that off. Could still turn that off. And I'm trying to see how the, the, this um, iPad, this is the iPad I'm pointing at right now, works pretty well as a camera. I'm not, I'm not too unhappy with it. Boy, these are not super comfortable headphones, though. Maybe I just have them adjusted right. Um, but basically, this is what I do. I, I diddle around on the synthesizers. I maybe do a little recording. Boy, you get some wacky sounds out of this thing. It is, it is. This is not a toy. This is a real. This is a real synthesizer. You know, what I mean, this is this, this thing has crazy amount of capabilities that I, I don't think anybody who's ever nobody's ever figured out all the things it can do. Trust me, it's that kind of level. It's like someday people will be studying this and still figure out ways of making weird sounds out of it, even with the one thousand sounds that are in there. There's nothing that's similar. So uh, again, thank you for coming by. I'm going to, um, yeah, to, to, to when you're live. I, I'm hoping your schedule works for me too. I mean, most, usually as long as you're not going too early, I can, I can catch your streams. I, you know, I'm willing to wake up to 5 a.m. to catch your streams more. Anyway, um, thanks for coming by. It's just um, this is a, a good t time to take a break, and I normally would, you know, would normally kind of take a few breaks. I wouldn't like do it continuously for an hour. Um, but I do like to have it set up, and I do like to, you know, I can basically just turn on the power and turn on a few power things, and it's all ready to go anytime I want to play with it. Uh, and I'm going to do this more often. I'm going to probably do at least once a week, we'll do a record, we'll, we'll do a studio stream at least. Um, it's not that much effort to put it in, although I'm going to try to streamline it. But yeah, now that I got my iPad as a camera, and then this thing, I have an extension cord. Um, I really, that's all I really need to be able to move over here to the studio. Well, wow, that's perfect. Yeah, if I can catch five hours out of your seven-hour stream, there you go. 
I don't mind missing two hours, but I don't like it when I miss the whole stream and then it's like, I don't even know what happened during that stream because you don't have, you just often do not have the VODs up. So, uh, anyway, thanks again. Uh, and I had a really good time. It was really interesting. And as I say, anytime I get to spend it in this, my little recording studio here, it's just a really fun time. And uh, we made a little piece of music here. I might listen to it again later and see if I like it or if I want to, you know, do anything with it. Uh, probably won't, but, you know, I do like 50 or 50, you know, do like 10 of them and like two of them will be good. You know, and the other, you can throw away the other eight and pretend they never existed. And they're pretty, as you can see, they're pretty easy to, to, to kind of jam off, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. So let me move over to my other setup here. All right, so, oh yeah, your VODs are up. Okay, it does take time, time, time. anyway. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 um, I'll um, yeah, I, I, get, I get the point. You don't get the immediate VODs. You just have to repost them. Because mine are automatic. They automatically, you know, they're there right after the end of the stream. But I guess you, I can understand why you don't want to do that. Oh, you did, cool. All right, well, you know, I'll see you guys next time. I will be streaming uh, through the, throughout the weekend, I think. Why not? Because I'll be here. So I will probably see everyone, uh, anyone who wants to see me tomorrow around the normal time. I don't know if anybody will be here, but I will. And I'm going to play some flight simulator and then I'm going to play guitar after that. So it's going to be fun or pretty normal, I think. <sighs> and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of evaluate how well this recording studio stream did. And, you know, I think it's, as far as the setup is good, as far as kind of, you know, the contents, eh, you know, because the cover, the interesting thing is I play a lot of, Yes, I've noticed that. That's that's right. When I play Rocksmith, and that does have copyrighted music, uh, it does take longer for it to be posted. Uh, but when I play my own music live, it doesn't get any kind of copyrights. It is a really cool setup, by the way. It's a very efficient setup. It's, it's just right for what I want. I got a drum machine. I got you know several synthesizers. I got a piano, and, I, and it all works together. It all and, and several microphones. It all works together. It's not magic. It's not necessarily trivial or easy i mean a lot of stuff is like a lot of most of the time i spent in effort is you can kind of see those there's, there's these thick looking cables under underneath there those are bundles those are bundles i made of about 15 cables that go that d put power and route everything all the audio all the power the mic cables so that they're not on the floor they're not actually there are cables on the floor but they're just power cables anything that's auto audio related kind of flows through this bus here then i kind of made that myself it it is a really good setup, but I put a lot of effort into it, and that's why I enjoy spending time there and making, you know, doing what it's for is re recording. The other thing I do is my conduit of humanity recordings, where they send me you know, unfinished tracks, and then I pu I plug, I program them into, uh, tr you know, like track seven, eight of my eight track recorder, and then I spend hours and hours trying to listen to the music and trying to add something, either a piano track, an organ track, electric piano track. Um, well, as I say, cables to me, cables are. It's all about getting the cables. You know, first of all, everything looks better. Secondly, everything's more reliable. Um, you know, you're not pulling things out accidentally or, you know, things. And, uh, and and there's a lot less stress on the cable connections and things like that. So the, the actual equipment seems to be working, you know, stays working better. But it's mainly aesthetic. But my point is, yeah, I put at least as much effort into kind of making this cable bundle, which you can kind of see under there. It's, 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 it's got several different kind of trunks. It's like a tree, practically. It's, it's, it's pretty heavy, too. But it services all of the needs of all these different synthesizers going into the mixer. And as I say, there's a lot of stuff there. And then they also go out to these two uh, speakers I have. There's one there and then one over here. Those are what I use as recording monitors. Those are 200-watt powered speakers each. They could, they, could, they could destroy you. They're so incredibly powerful if you wanted to. I mean, they could shake the neighborhood up. Uh, which I so I, I, I keep them turned way down <laughs> um, but they're 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 pretty loud okay so I'm gonna head out um, I'm gonna see uh, you know more I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow I'll see people tomorrow I'll look forward to seeing people tomorrow and uh, um, yeah I mean I thought people might be interested in my recording studio so I'm gonna do it a few more times I'm gonna do the same thing each time I'm gonna kind of talk about what everything is how it's put together and you know what makes uh, you know how the how the thing uh, Oh, really? Yeah, no, you get the cops will come too. But no, I, hey, you're welcome to come by. I got a party here, you got the pools across the street, you know, so so there's there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, party locations, but yeah, we we can do the um we could we could do definitely set up a little disco here, you know. I just not a huge dance floor or anything like that. 
<laughs> but no, I have I've taken these speakers and I have them. I have poles, speaker poles for them, and I've, I've I've used them outdoors in like a large backyard setting, and they were too loud for that. People are like to turn them down, you know, just to play like background music for the party or, or be able. To, I had my piano and I was playing that. They're like. You could easily use them, just the two of them, to, to do things. And then I've also used them, you can put them on their side. I've used them as wedge monitors. When I was playing with this setup here in a band, um, I put one of my, the, the wedge monitor right there so I could hear myself. And that's perfect because you can get a, a monitor and then it's powered. It's really cool. Yeah, we'll have a dance. We'll move the coffee table. We'll have plenty of plenty room to dance around. It'll be fun. Uh, so, yeah, we'll look forward to that. So. You got more room, Ward, in, in where you have probably for a dance floor, I think, probably in your, your huge house. Okay, and really, I'm having a great time talking, but I do want to get, uh, get end the stream and move on uh, with my day. Um, I thought it was a longer stream. It felt really long, but I think it's just because I've been talking a lot and going over a lot of material and playing a lot of music and stuff like that. Um, and then we also had the whole first, you know, we had a flight simulator session, too. So... Um, I wanted to mention more why if you're still there, one of the things you get when you upgrade, when you upgrade to the new flight simulator is you get a new model of 10 different airports, new models, including the San Francisco airport, Dallas O'Hare, um, uh, uh, Dallas airport, Chicago O'Hare, and Cape, one of the 10 is Cape Town. There's Shai Paul. Okay, you'd be on, you go to sleep. So we do want to go back to the Cape Town airport to see the new Cape Town airport, the new, the new model. Okay, it's the same airport, but they have a new model that includes better rendered buildings. Like the buildings were kind of generic. They weren't bad, but apparently, so I haven't seen it yet. So it's a new thing. So next time you're on stream and we're doing flight simulator, we will do a Cape Town a fly around of the, of the, uh, the, the Cape Town international airport there. Um, cause it's a new, it's, as I said, I'm, I'm, I want to see it. It's, we saw the old one, so I'm familiar with what the old model looks like, but I just got it last weekend, like a week ago. So I haven't had tried a chance to try it yet. And I thought it'd be fun to do that. In fact, that's one of the reasons I got it. I was like, I've got a new model for the Cape Town airport. Sign me up. You know, that's going to be fun. All righty. Again, thanks. Thanks again for coming. I am definitely signing off this time and, uh, changing my starting soon sign. So that that's indication that the stream will be ending. Actually. Bye.